Talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not my dad walk on. Man, hey man. Listen, man, we got a special guest in here today, man. I'm going to be honest with you. When I say special, a lot of times I be I just be tripping. But today is special. I ain't going to lie to you to me. You know, when it's special to me, it's a whole nother level of special. Mm -hmm. Check it, man. We got my boy, man, the legendary man, Ronnie Spencer, is in the building. What's going on, my brother? Nothing much, man. Just taking it easy, taking it day by day. I man. Like hey, man, you know, uh, yeah, I could write a book about what I've been going through, but I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, what's up with you, man? You, you, Hey, I like that shirt. Thank you, thank you. My, I made it. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> I know my daughter going to want one of those. Oh, man, she knows. She, hey, man, when she came here the other week, man, hey, she, I fell in love with it. I followed them all the way to Oak Cliff, man, wherever they want me to go. Whatever y'all want to do, we shut down. We jumped in the truck and followed them. That's yeah. love. That's a lot of love. Because they wanted that um, Dallas chicken, so we yeah, had to take them over to, to Rudy's. Yeah, they wanted to check out the chicken Dallas chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got a chicken spot called Rudy's Chicken, man. Shout out Rudy's Chicken, man. Man, well, Rudy, I got to come see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hearing right now, it must be some good chicken. Man, that's it's what everybody salty. say. But I like it. I like he it. He loved the salt. I like it. They're not man. real salty. They just they they not from the country. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When you're from the country, you 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 know everything salty. Everything salt and pepper and lyra seasoning. You know okay. she Jamaican. So oh. they, <laughs> 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 say man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, anytime. Man, I sure appreciate it, man. Hey, man, hey, this legendary for me anyway because I'm a big fan, man, and man, I've been listening you. at you for a long time. I didn't even realize. I didn't even going realize on. it. Why you always got to put that out there? <laughs> Don't what? make me look bad. I mean, it, I remember driving down the road listening to that song. We were doing research on Renetta and that song came up with because he's a big Pimp Pimp oh, C yeah, fan Pimp C like C huge Pimp C yeah. fan bad. Yeah, that's and bad. that song came bad, on bad. and he was like no let's look up another song of his and see and we matching the voices to try to you see if like it was Ron really Isley. you I thought it was Ron Isley <laughs> that's what I thought he could not believe it I thought it was like, Ron Isley I'm telling you what I thought everybody think it was Ron Isley but now I'm going to tell you the, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you something that they don't realize it was a Rona Osley song. Oh. Really? That's and why you got world, me. Yeah, the world don't know. So the song is called, it's on the Live It Up album. Uh-huh. Okay. And the song is called Ain't I Been Good To You by okay. Rona Osley. And what I did was just rewrote the words and sung it the way that I felt you know, that I felt that like That you it, felt like it needed, it needed to, be. to be. You feel, and, uh, cause music talk to you, so. Right. If you just sit down and listen to the track, you can pretty much, you know, know pretty much what to say on the, on the song if you listen real good. Man, I tell you, when I, when I first heard it, this was in 19, I believe 95. I'm gonna say 95, 94. Whenever it came out, that Riding Dirt album. 96. 96. I knew it was somewhere, right. I, look, cause I, you know, I, I ain't gonna tell y'all my age. But you know, I kind of remember when rap first started, nigga. So don't don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> when it first started out, like when it wasn't no, you know, it was just R and B and me. Mm -hmm. I was good and, with and, that too. And when rap yeah. first started, was a Jamaican who started it, right? No, nah, we don't want right? to go there. This is the part I don't like right there. You know, it, you, this is what I get. They say that a, a Jamaican started rap. Uh -huh. And and and, they, and oh I researched God. it what and they said, yeah, yeah. Well, I was mad about that man. I can might be wrong, but I thought rap came out. Uh, Sugar Hill Gangs? No, I no. think I think rap started, and this young particular man was is real good. He go by the name of Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. When, when he first did, uh, I'm your mama. I'm yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, DJ Cool Herc. Look. He, yeah, he's Jamaican, DJ Cool Herc. But what you just said, so come you on, tell your story. When you, Google, that, when you Google it, it said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's <laughs> Google, 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 Google the line. Tell no, me about what no. you about to say about Curtis I, Mayfield. I mean, <laughs> Mayfield was the one to me. Yeah. I could be wrong, but Mayfield is the one to me that really got people to kind of jumping on rap because he kind of did singing rap. Okay. And, you know, actually I did a song over with Mayfield. But See that? It's mm. like, uh, then that's when I guess, 
the Sugar Hill Gang and all, all the these other ones start coming up. Start coming up with you know with rap music and then boom, I think it just blowed up. But you know the real hip hop artists is out there. Maybe I shouldn't say it like that. It was like Careless One and yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was real hip hop. They was real, the original. You know the original stuff out there. So I got to give it to the New York people. They was mm-hmm. they was on it. You know, for as so do we, do we want to you want to go back? Yeah, I know you so always mess yeah, with people. Like, she got I this like thing she do. No, because a lot of times I like to go back in someone's history because a lot of times when people get to know each other, know themselves really, they go through the ups and downs, and that can help a lot of our viewers to know that they're going through something that you already went through and how you overcame it. You right. see what I mean? Yeah, I so tell me about you before the music. Well, I was a church boy, you mm-hmm. know, mama kept me in church. So, you know, I sung in the choir on St. Emmanuel and uh, I just used to walk around the house and sing, you know. And, and how uh, old were you at that time? Six. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, six and just don't, didn't know I was singing. Just Did you get it from your mama? Uh, my mama did play in a band. Okay. At, uh, 4212 I met on Mitchell's Lounge back in Houston. They did have a band back there. And okay, so play. you... So I guess that's where I, I got my singing from. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing instruments, my daddy played a B3 Hammond organ. So I, you know, picked a lot of stuff up from him, like the hats and stuff <laughs> like that, because it was all back in the day. That's all they wore was, you know, dog golf all this and mm-hmm. hats like that. They all dressed up and kept me coats and stuff on. So oh yeah, I just Tom Walkers, man. I just yeah, I just yeah, I, I just picked it up. <laughs> and were you raised in the house with your mom and your dad? I was raised in the house with my mom. I was more of a mama boy than I was a dad boy. So okay. I was raised with my mama. You know, she had four of us. So it's three boys and one girl. My lovely sister by the name of Rachel Spencer, my oldest brother, Richard Spencer, and my other brother, Rawton Barrett. He the only one had the last name of my father, but everybody else had Spencer. So oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. So you fell in the middle of all of those kids. I'm the, I'm the baby boy. The baby boy. It's the baby oh, so boy. you the spoiled. I'm Whoa. Spoiled, I'm Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You say the spoiled brat? Yeah. Yes. yeah he, that's why he was a mama's boy. Mama's she must have been boy. a playboy, that boy, not that mm-hmm. little one. No, she Just like you. Same thing. Yep. It's just a different time. I, <laughs> I was a playboy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she can't say nothing you got on that. I got her. I already know, man. So, uh, just when you was coming up, when did you realize like I- I'm gonna do music professionally? Was that later on? That was later on. That was later on. I used to play a lot of sports. Played a lot of played bas- football, yeah, basketball, yeah, yeah, basketball, and that's how I really got discovered on the basketball court. Really? So, Were you singing yeah, on the basketball court? I was used to sing and, and shoot the ball in the hoop and no. laugh. Oh. And I got so good at it, to people was like, oh, "He can't, man. He can't do this." And then there's a it's a guy by the name of Al D. Okay. Really, uh, used to always tell me, "Hey, man, when I, I do my album." I, you got to be on it. I want you to sing on it. I said, okay, no problem. At first, I thought he was, you know. Joking. Joking, but he never was joking. He was serious. So one day, we was playing. We had a big basketball meeting out there. There's a bunch of us playing basketball. And uh, this uh, limousine pulled up. Hmm. And it was uh, two big guys got out of it. And we still playing basketball. And I'm winning. And I'm still shooting the ball and singing on them. And, and they was just standing there looking. And then... Uh, one of the guys say, say, man, you know these guys right over here? I said, no. So uh, Al D, you know, he had told them where I was and this type of stuff. And uh say, man, we jammed down records. And uh, we need you on a project. Uh, we got a project that we're doing with Al D. We just signed him, and he wants you on his album. And I was like, oh, man, I was just playing games. You know, I, I didn't take it serious. So he said, well, man, I got a... Three thousand dollars, man. I, that money you know, make you take it serious. Yeah, real quick. I got three thousand dollars, man. I, he really wants you on the song. Uh, if you want to do it, I mean, that's what we'll pay you. You know. Mm-hmm. By then, I didn't know nothing about music. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know. You know, I just said okay. When you said three racks, I said okay. I, See let's that go. money? Yeah, that money. <laughs> so, I even got in the limousine uh-huh. and, and talked to these cats. And he said, well, man, we'll take you to your house. You can follow us. I said, okay, cool. And I was right around the corner from the park. And That's I cool. followed them off a of telephone road and jammed down studio. And uh, they played a song called Let Me Blow. That's the name of the song that I got on on the mm-hmm. album. The name of the album was Home of the Free. And that's your first one. 
and that was my first song. Mm -hmm. So I did the song, and, and, and they loved it. It took me probably about five minutes. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I really don't know what I'm doing because they're in the studio, and you got engineers, and they just kept saying, putting their thumb up. I said, okay, I guess that's, that's it. So he said, yeah, And how it, old man. were you at that time? I was about, mm, probably about 20, 21, 22, so okay. around that area, I guess, around in that area. Okay. And um, the song blew up. And I'm like, man, you know, so I guess I do sound good. I but guess how did like you that. feel the first time you heard the song on the radio? When I heard the song on the radio, I was amazed about it. I was like, man, is that really me? Because, you know, radio, they put another sound to, to you know, your voice. Mm -hmm. and so I started sounding professional. I said, <laughs> I, you know, I'm professional, so I better, you know, <laughs> I got to check into this. So it blowed up, and then, uh, you know, I had been knowing Screw. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he got the song. He said, man, you sound so good on that song. I got a lot of work for you. I said, okay, cool. We was cool. You know, we both DJs. So so you so DJed okay. at first. That, yeah. That's what I was about yeah. to ask. What so were you doing at that time, career-wise, before I was, that? I was DJing at Alameda Skating Ring. Mm. Okay. And uh, was, everybody was calm. The place used to be packed on Sundays. And Sundays mm -hmm. we probably have about 12, 1,300 people in that skate. The skating ring was big was back big, then. big back then. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, everybody listened to grooves and hip-hop and rap. And, you know, Screw was doing his thing. He was slowing up music. and you know, Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, you know, and I would play the song and they would, they would skate to it. I'm like, okay, I, I think I'm going to be something here. So what I used to do, I used to always sing. And uh, I would play songs like Osley Brothers, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, and I would be singing with the song while they're skating. Wow. And, and they I, wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. Wow. Because I could change my voice like that. They wouldn't know. I would have so, turned it off one, one time, just one time, and just start singing just to see the well, response. Well, there was a young lady like yourself <laughs> skating, and she stopped. And she kind of got over in a corner, and she was just watching me. And she come up there, and she said, you really singing this song? I said, yeah. She said, I think you need to sing professionally. But she never knew that I did the song with Aldi. Yeah. And she would skate to it. She never knew it, but she thought it was Ron Isley. See? That's what so, I'm telling you, man. So, so I, it just, tricked me. Yeah, it just kept going and going. And so one day she told a lot of people in the skate ring, Ronnie's singing up there, man. That ain't, y'all tripping. He's singing up there. And I said, oh, man. I said, man, next Sunday y'all watch. He going to be singing. And I never knew she had told, told him that. People. So it's a couple of Ron Isley songs come on. I got to going hard, you know, because I'm, I'm singing. I, play, I think I played Smooth Sailing by Ron Isley. It did. Mm -hmm. And man, it, the song come on and it was just going, and so I got into it. You know, so she looked up and she called me, "Nothing but smooth sailing tonight." So I just kept singing it, and the next thing I know, everybody stopped skating, <laughs> and they're looking at and me, <laughs> and I'm so off into the music, you know, I'm not paying them attention, and then all of a sudden, they just start clapping. When it wow. happened, I raised up. I said, oh, man, these people. This is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. Did I you said, get oh, nervous at that time? That's when I got nervous. I said, oh, <laughs> man, this is crazy. And I, and I couldn't get the smile off my face. And they was like, man, you sound so good, man. We thought that was uh, Ron Ron Woods, Ron Ozzy, yeah. mm -hmm. but I played the instrumental. Mental. Yeah. Wow. And went in. And, and then see, you. But see, the only instrumental on Smooth Sailing, they have the background on there. Yes. But they don't have the lead part. So I did the lead part. Right. So when the background came in, I knew they would know it was the Osley Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but by me not knowing that I sound so identical like him, they was amazed. They was just stopping, just stopped skating. So, I'm, so when they started clapping, I'm like, everybody ain't skating no more. <laughs> they was listening to me. They were listening uh -huh. at you. And I had so many people come to the booth, and man, I, I want you to do this on my album. I, and you never knew. I never knew of so many people in there that was doing projects, mm -hmm. albums, and, and it, was just, it was amazing. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So that's, Wow. That's, that's crazy. So how long after that did you meet um, uh, how did you end up linking with uh, UGK? UGK uh, heard Al D's album. Okay. And uh, he was going to do some stuff with Screw. Okay. And he Pimp asked, C? Yeah, Pimp C was. He was going to do some stuff with Screw. So he said, Screw, man, who is this Who is this guy sound like the, the Osley brothers? So Screw said, that's my god dad. He said, no, man. He said, yeah. Can you get him? He said, yeah, call him. He'll come right over. As a matter of fact, he just left. 
Wow. He said, man, I got a song. So he played the song, Ain't I Been Good To You by the Osley Brothers. Okay. And uh, I listened to it. I said, yeah, I know that whole song. You know. So he said, uh, well, man, uh, I got a track that I want you to do. And he had sampled the Live It Up song. I mean, Ain't I Been Good To You on the Live It Up album. Okay. And I said, yeah. He said, you think you can do something with that? I said, sure. I said, but don't, don't play it because I don't want to get in trouble with Ronald. I say, we had come up with the right words, and, you know, I can kind of, you know, do it. He said, okay. So it took me about five minutes, and I, uh, I sung what I thought would go on the track. Yeah. And they loved it. UGK mm. loved it. They jumped and said, man, let's, let's, let's record it. Let's go to Skip Holman in the morning and record it. So I said, okay. So when he said Skip Holman, I'm, I'm thinking it's just a – a studio in a house or something like that. But when I got out there, it was a million dollar studio. Ooh, wow. So now I get nervous. I'm like, whoa, man, what is this? Man, this man had a mixing console probably from wall to wall in there, probably over, over 150 tracks on the board. So I'm like, okay, this is the big league. This wow. is Wow, <laughs> you like, I, this is it? I got to, you this, know, this, what, this is, is what they shooting yeah, for. Yeah, man, so now I kind of get a little cocky. And I say, so all right. So I'm singing the song, so everybody's telling me how to do it. So now I realize. Now this is the one. The one. This the, is one day. Yeah. yeah. So I realized that man, uh, you can't sing. You can't sing. Y'all, y'all trying to tell me how to sing. Exactly. So Skip Holman said, "I like that. Can everybody get out of the studio? And let him do what he do." Pimp, she said, "That's the best thing to do. Let him do him." So <laughs> I, I said, like right. that. So I, I, I did the song, and uh, it was like in probably about three or four minutes. I finished the song, That's and cool. uh, they was all gone to lunch. And when they came back, it's a wrap. I was sitting outside by the pool, and I hear all this screaming and hollering and jumping, man. And so they all come outside. I said, man, come back up. I said, what's going on? I said, y'all don't like it. He said, no, it's a hit. We love it. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's gonna be official. Well, some kind of way that song got out. Okay. You know, because they mouse it right then. Some kind of way that song got out. And me and Pimp ride, and we going home, and and the song come on the radio. That same day. That same day. That's one thing. Um, I don't know. Renata was saying thing. something like that about yeah. which one, which song was it? Uh, Bar Baby. Bar Baby. Bar Baby. That it came out and like that too. Yeah, and it just, nobody does that anymore. Not in the same day. Yeah. How how does that? How well, is that guys, possible? Man, these guys was professional. They I mean, get they knew how to put them do them play call yeah. a playlist now. And, and, and Pimp <laughs> was just <laughs> incredible in the studio working with him. So he already pretty much knew what he wanted. Oh, you so know, and, and him and Bumby uh, was incredible. That's all I can say about those guys. Special Bumby, he was the type of guy he could write his verse and read it and ball it up and throw it in the trash, go to sleep mm. and wake up. Pimp say, "Bum, go go lay your verse," and he go one take and it's done. Mm. So he he was one of the guys that I first seen do that, and I was like. That young man is amazing. That young man got a gift. So wow. I always said Bond was for his time because he was so good with words and uh, he could write, write stuff and just kill it. Man, kill it. You want that one day? You want to hit that one? <laughs> Please. <laughs> one day? Y'all, yeah. you, you, want, you want to hear the acapella? You want to hear acapella. the music? Or acapella. Do you, wanna, All right. do you, you wanna, know I wanted acapella. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I thought you wanted it with an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to hear your voice. You want to hear my voice? Okay, here yes. it is. I'm going to do it for Boss Talk 101. Here hey. it is. Fool, one day you hear, and then you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day you hear, baby, and then you're gone. One day you hear, baby, and then you're gone. Man, man. Hey, man. You made a tear come Listen, to my man. eye. I don't do boy, that. Boy, I used to be in that old, in that old Cadillac I had, boy. I was mm -hmm, coming down mm -hmm. through there, boy, when I had that thing rumbling. <laughs> you don't understand, man. Say, when I come through there, Man, you couldn't tell me nothing, man. I, and I was gonna get in some trouble back then. You gonna get oh in some man. Trouble, man, oh yeah. You know, I was I was a young cat then. You know, so uh, yeah, I was going to jail or something that day. <laughs> Your voice is and this it it. <laughs> I'm speechless, but it it comes down in your in Renetta. Her voice was just so effortless Different, when she man. sang. 
it was just so effortless. And that's the same thing with your voice. You hit those notes and it's like there's no fault in your voice. No. Thank you. Thank so I'm like, when did you realize that you passed it down in your gene to her? When she was born. Now, this is the craziest thing. When she was born, I was really waiting to see because I wanted a, either a boy or a girl. Yeah. And it really, really true, I wanted a boy. I already know. And I said, like, I want a boy. I said, I don't want a girl. I said, I didn't. <laughs> and and when, she, when her mother was pregnant, she said, well, well, we having a girl. I said, I don't want a girl. You can have her. <laughs> And I didn't hold Ronella for like six months. Really? I was really serious. I wanted to do it. I said, I want a boy because I ain't got to worry about nobody. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, with yeah. Him. And uh, when, when, she, when she was born, instead of her hollering when the doctor spanked her, she hit a note. No. Wow. Yeah. She hit really? A, yeah, she hit a note. That scream was so unique. And my ears just rested. I say, That's how you my daughter finna sing. I got a singer, so I start running around. Man, I got a singer, I got a singer. And so now they looking. So they said, we thought you didn't want a girl. I mean, give me my baby, man. So this, she, she got it. And everybody was looking at me like I was retarded. And nobody said, heard it but they, you. Nobody heard it but me. Or recognized it, really. So one day, she started doing all the stuff. So when I sing, sometimes I beatbox. And yeah. don't know I'm doing it. Wow. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, and I'll show you all that in a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm singing, don't know I'll be doing it. And when I heard her, she just come to me and she say, Daddy, and she did say, I say, what's up? She say, look at this, A, B, C, and I passed out. <laughs> so folks, that's what I used to do. When you were younger. When I was young. So wow, I said, and she I didn't say, even know that. That put it on the hot line. I and said, how she, old was she at that time? She was like about mm, four. Okay. So I'm like, she kind of made a beat. While she was singing, I thought I was the only one to do that. Wow. And when I recorded one day, No D is the one of the producers, say, man, he beatbox when he sing. And when Skip Holman, he say, take all the music out and just play around his vocals. So when he did, that's what was going on when I was singing one wow. day. Wow. So they cleaned it all. I said, we got to clean all of that because he beatbox. They thinking it's a, a instrument. No, I said, no, man, he, he, uh, Beatbox when he sings. You've been doing it ever since you was little. And I still do it as today and don't know when I'm doing it. You don't realize it. I don't realize it. It becomes a habit. So what it was, like the snare is probably on the one or the two or you know, the four downbeat. I always was on the one. And it would just come out when I do it. And that's what kept my count on the bars of music. Oh. Uh, the measures of the music. That's yeah. What, got it. And they tried for days. And don't, don't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. Because it, it was just natural. It was a natural wow. gift. So I've been doing it since I've been doing music. How did it sound? Give me something. It's kind of like, uh, I'm going to sing the part that uh, on the new song that me and Ron Isley got. Yeah, I've been, I supposed to got that already. <laughs> yeah. so, the, so the name of this song is, um, it's an inspiration song. And it's called, uh, hell, I forgot. It's, <laughs> uh, it's been so long since I did it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing his part. Okay. And you might can hear it. Oh, excuse me. You might can hear it in in my voice. Let's go. He say, uh, "Listen up, son. I heard you back in the day. It was a song by UGK. I think you call it one day. You're here, now you're gone. Oh, but life goes on. Cause the day you prayed for is the day we did this song. You gotta hold on, be strong, and never give up the fight. You gotta stay true to what you do. Everything gonna be all right. You gotta hold on, be strong, never give up the fight. Fight. You got to stay true to what you do, and everything going to be all right. Boy, I boy, like boy. That. Man, you, Ronald Isley, and you sound, I couldn't you tell need the to put difference, that song man. Out. Yeah, yeah, we it's, heard it's about gonna, you being romantic with it. That's yes, what it was. I we ain't you letting been nothing go. We got an archive full of it. You got an yeah. archive full of stuff, and you won't even give it to her. Yeah, I'm finna give y'all yeah. some stuff today. I'm gonna give y'all some stuff today. And then I told my because that's yeah, 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 you're romantic with it. I love because this hanging on to every word that you were saying. I believe. I'm like, I believe that it's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. So I mean, and, I love it. And the part, the best part of that song, we did the song. Name the song is "Hold On." We did that song, and my mother was living. Wow. 
So she got a chance to, to hear, hear it. it. She got a chance to see some of the video footage of me and Rona in St. Louis, Missouri, at, wow. his, at his home in the studio. And to me, I know when I put it out, it's, like, it's going to be a touching moment when I put that out mm-hmm. because she knew that's who I wanted to meet in me. my career. And you did. And I thank D- Derek Dixon, d uh, for putting that together and make that happen with us. Uh, the song is done, it's mastered, and I just haven't released it. Run, run, run us through the, how, the, through, through the that day, that day when you, right, when you when did you that met. with Ron or when y'all went and made this well, happen. Well, it was, it was crazy on that day because I was at home. Okay. I had just left the studio. I was at home, and I was chilling, looking at, looking at me a little vampire picture, laughing. And, and I get a phone call and say, uh, hey, man, uh, this is Rick. I say, what's going on? You everything all right? He say, yeah, man, uh, Ron, Ron Osley is... is at the arena tower, he got a show tonight, and he want to meet you. Well, I said, oh, man, you playing. I hung the phone up. Quit playing, man. I hung the phone up. So, like, Sometimes them cats play a lot, you know, joke a lot. So, so he, he called again. He said, hey, man, you need to get ready. Uh, we need to have you at the arena. I said, man, what are you talking about, man? He said, I told you, Ron, I honestly want to see you. want to talk to you. you want to hear you. you. He agreed to do the song. So I said, okay. So, uh. I said, well, all right, man, I guess I'll you know, get ready. He said, man, you need to hurry up because he's going he gonna to be performing probably around 7 o'clock, and they want to see you before they hit the stage. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh, okay, man, all right. And the doorbell rung, and when I opened the door, it was a D-Rex. Wow. Mm. He outside. He said, man, I'm ready for you to come. So now I know it's serious. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, I'll be, I'll be downstairs in about five, ten minutes. I'm downstairs, <laughs> got cleaned up. And he said, no, you don't need to get clean. I don't want you to get clean. I just need you to come on now. We need to we go We just now. need your voice. So my mom said, get your ass out of here. <laughs> so I, said, right, so I, 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 I left. So we gone down the stairs. We get in the car. We go. And sure enough, in the arena theater tower, he was there. Mm-hmm. So it was him, Ernie Osley. Angela Winbush and a couple of more people. Then he had his wow, Angela he had his hairdresser there. He walking around in a fubu. Okay, you now he cape. always fly. Yeah, he fly. That's what I like about him. He in, he in his little fubu robe and in, in, in the hairdressers curling his hair as he walk. And he turn around and said, "All I heard you sound like me." <laughs> that what I you saw, So I said, "I guess that's what they say." You know, I, you know. And he said, "Yeah, uh, that's what's been the talk in the town and talking." St. Louis, Missouri, that you wow. sound like me, and ain't nobody sound like me in 30 years. So I'm like, okay. So he said, well, since you sound like me, uh, let me hear some. Let me hear some. <laughs> so I What'd guess they say? thought, I guess they thought I was just going, you know, freeze up. So I said, okay, what you want to hear? He said, anything. Then, then, then uh, Ernie say, do hello. So I say, hello. Mm. Said, yeah. I said, okay. I hit that thing, boy. I, I love that. <laughs> So they all standing there, Ernie playing with his guitar, you know, getting the tune for So I'm like, okay, so all of a sudden, I said, oh, here we go. Hello, 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 girl, hello, hello, oh. Hello, 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 hello. So he like, where's that? Wait, 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 wait a minute, man, wait a minute. So I said, oh, okay. So he say, oh, well, do, do smooth sailing. I said, nothing but smooth sailing tonight. If it, anything that you want from me, it's mine. I like tonight. So he said, wait, okay. Do, <laughs> say, stop. He said, man, <laughs> so he said, man, stop. He said, I'll tell you what. So he said, man, do summer breeze. Said, summer breeze. <laughs> and then he, he like, wait, now, hold up. So Angela say, uh, is that your son? <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 she, he said, no, Ron said, no, he's not my son. Oh. So, so Ernest said, man, you've been messing around. There's something, there's something you ain't telling us. It's, it's got to be your son because he's hitting every note. Right. That you hit, he sound identical. Man, this man is, is, is off the chain. Are you sure that ain't your son? I say, hmm. So he asked me, he say, oh, is that your dad? I said, no, my dad deceased. He passed. And they all looked at each other. He say, okay, let's do the song. We're going to do the song. Where you want to do the song at? I say, oh. We can do it uh, at your place. Wow. Because I was ashamed of my studio. I get it, I get it. So I said, I don't want him here. I, 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 I want to go with the big boys. And so they all looked at me and said, so, so Ron said, it's cool, it's cool. And he was so, he was so, man, 
he was just so pleasant and just he had you could tell he had a good heart. Wow. Uh -oh. And uh he said, I'll tell you what. He said, How many plane tickets you need? Mm. So I say, Well, no D D Rick and me. He said, Cool. He said, I will have y'all round trip flank plane tickets in about two weeks. We can do it at my studio. And that was the best news I could hear. Wow. So it's like my heart you was just fluttering. Oh, man, was just, yeah, my heart was just fluttering. I said, man, I don't believe this happening. This is when I wished that I had my daughter and my mom with me. But, yeah. you know, it, it was just so, it happened so, so quick. quick. And then I, uh, we waited two minutes. Next time we get up, go to the airport. We fly to St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I have it all on film. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was just nice. Wow! But he had this. He had a big mansion, and he was, and one of his mansions was in a quarter sec. And uh, his was the biggest one. And uh, when we got to the door, he had this big brass, uh, looked like a big brass trash can, but it wasn't. Wow! And you got to put. You had every sneaker. Sneaker in there. You got to put so them shoes gotta, in there. You got to take your shoes. That's off, right. Put them in that basket that little brass basket and when you get in all in the inside it's real marble flows and he got every house shoe for anybody coming there even the shack came through that he he had a house he got shoe a house for. shoe for mm. so that's what you 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 walked around in the house with so we in the house and it was so natural for me to sing and hear him sing and angela winbridge i just love her voice and to hear her sing so they taking us around and so it's natural man ronald just starts singing Mm -hmm. And it looked like the song that we were singing, we were just singing and harmony and, and, and it fit so perfect. And they was all looking at us and said, you see this? They even act the same. They even walk the same. <laughs> they, so I'm like, man. So I veered off and uh, went around a corner. The house was so big and singing. Angela Winbush thought it was her husband. Mm. And wow. she turned around and looked at me and just grabbed me. She said, oh, my God, this, I'm thinking you're wrong. I said, no, I'm just singing. She said, <laughs> Y'all sound amazing. He said, man, I can't wait to, to go to the studio to do it. Wow. And she was so strong and unique. She could hear every wrong note, note. from me or Ronald. Mm. So the engineers was messing up because we both sounded so delight. And uh, they would erase Ronald's verse, thinking <laughs> it's mine. And they would erase my verse, thinking, thinking it's Ronald. Me. So Angela didn't like that. She says, I, I got to get this together. This, we ain't supposed to be here these long. Both of these guys are professional. We, so I said, I'll tell you what, mark my my vocals on these tracks, put them in yellow mm -hmm. with a piece of tape, put his in orange. Okay. Now you mm -hmm. won't get confused. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, we did the song so fast and quick, it was just, it was unbelievable. Okay. So, But then what the amazing thing, I, the reason why I can't wait for it to come out I can't wait to hear, to see if I can tell the difference in both of y'all's voices. Well, you're going to be able to tell the difference because I had to sing in another octave. Just to get oh. them to even be Just to, to get it where it's, you can tell, tell who's the difference. Who. But some people right today, most people out of 100%, 95% still can't tell. Wow. Mm. So that's the exciting part when I get a chance to see people's expressions and how they look, and, and I'll be like, I'm see if he, and some of them say, oh, that's Ronnie. Some no, that's Ronnie. No, that's Ronnie. So they go to the and I'm like, man, this is crazy. So I can't wait to do it, and I'm, I'm really trying to do this song and put it out before anything happened to me or him. Mm. That's it. So that's I, it. I think the world, if my vision is, I think we need to be in King Charles, yeah. the back of people, and mm -hmm. sing, and then one of them turn around and it's not the person that you think. And then when I turn around, it's not you. Be wow. like, Whoa, that'd be that'd dope. Be dope. That'd be real yeah. cool. And that's what I really want to do. And I'm gonna talk to uh, Pup and you know Empire because that's who I'm going to release this next album with. with. And I'm gonna I talk to him and see if we can make that happen. My question is, if okay, say you go in the studio and both of you sing, can you tell the difference? Yeah. I can tell a difference. Ron can tell a difference. And he's oh, the yeah. first one saying, no, I know the difference because Ron is a look more higher than me, believe it or not. Ron mm -hmm. can hit some notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can go in there and hit some of his notes, but I can't hit, hit all, all his of notes. It. Yeah. And I know how far I can go. And, and you know, I'm following a legend, so he, he don't have to. That's <laughs> right. He can, I'm following him, so he can just do his thing. And right. I heard him hit some notes 
that's I mean a high tenor note is just you know off the chain and I'm like man I hit that note for his age his voice is phenomenal I it mean, is it's, it's that's right crazy. today even if the new stuff that he's got out right now at his age I don't think a single out here can do what he have did in the music industry for a singing wow. and what I love about Ronald Isley is the fact that he reinvented himself and stayed current as Mr. Where, Big right where a lot of artists can't a lot yeah. of the older artists is still doing still, their right you know and I give credit to to R. Kelly on yes. that because Me R. Too. Kelly that was a smart move he did and him mm -hmm. and Ron Isles is real good partners and friends and uh, mm -hmm. he did say it's hard to work with Kelly which you know that's the good people when you start working with people that really know music you have to really humble yourself and yeah. listen to see where they want the song and how they want it to sound because they wrote it. So mm -hmm. they kind of pretty much know what it needs to be like. So he said, other than that, Kelly's a good dude. And uh, they yeah, did a lot yeah of he's hits. very talented. They did a lot of hits together. I can't wait till he get out because I want to do a song with Kelly. You mm -hmm. want to do one with him when he get out? Oh, yeah, Kelly's all right. I mean, I think, you know, you know, Court's got what they got to say, yeah. but I still treat him like a, a celebrity, a yeah. person, yeah. Yeah. a human, you know, yeah, a we good all. person, you know. Uh, they always going to attack the blacks for some reason. Come on, exactly. man. Why. Come on, man. But, you know, just like what they did to Michael Jackson. Same and thing. Cars and Same thing. But they can't wrong. take away his legend from they him. Can't, they they can't, can't take away and his I, talent. Exactly. And I tell people that. And they look at me and say, oh, no, man, he washed up. I said, that's just mm -mm. your stupidity. I say, mm -mm. what this man have did in music. And I say, you don't know who Kelly wrote songs with. He wrote songs to Michael Jackson, a whole bunch of people. That's mm -hmm. right. I say, and, and trust me. That man probably have so much music when he come out, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shock the world. Exactly. And I want to be one of the first ones to really work with him because I mm -hmm. really feel that I can do a lot of stuff. See, with and that. that's one of the things I had, one of the questions I had is who would you want to work with? But you already answered that. I got uh, It's a lot of them I want to work with. You know, I want to work with a lot of different rappers. I want to work with a lot of different R&B ladies and men. I think me and Charlie Wilson can do something. That's my guy. Uh, yeah, that's I think my we guy. can do something together. Uh, I think... Um, me and believe it or not, I'd say me and Lady Gaga. Uh, really? Any, yeah. I would have never. Lady I would have never guessed Lady Gaga. Yeah, because my daughter, I do a lot of pop stuff for her, mm -hmm. so I didn't got into that feel, kind of doing a lot of pop stuff with her. Singing is 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 very <laughs> easy. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's hard, but it's you just have to take your time, and it's a lot of breath takes that you have to take. You got to know that how to use your diaphragm or, or your voice. So when I was in church. Those are the to me are the king singles because they gonna they gonna beat your voice up until you get it right. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like uh pretty much that type of stuff. So you learn how to to uh control your voice. <laughs>